Hey everyone, Livy here, back with our video. Um, today we are doing actually a tarot tag that <laughs> I was tagged in. Uh, this tag in particular is called Tarot Emoji Match. This is um, a tag created by uh, Han over at Simply Han or Han. I think it's Han. Sorry. Han. Simply Han. Um, and it basically is where you match up emojis um, to tarot decks, like different types of emojis that might be in existence. Now, I will say <laughs> Han did this cool thing in their video where they had, um, they actually had the emojis appear on the screen. I am not that, uh, what's the word? I'm not, I'm not that advanced here. So <laughs> I'll just mention what the prompts are. Um, they will also be below if you guys want to do this tag too. So prompt number one is the artist paint palette emoji. And it's basically your deck, a deck with your favorite art. Um, this was really hard <laughs> because pretty much every deck I have is like up there in favorite art. But so I kind of tried to go with a deck that I knew I really was attracted to the art for so long. And that's why I really wanted the deck. And that is the Slow Tarot by Lacey Bryant. What I love is that like uh, each of these, each of these cards was actually like a big painting first before it was tarot or maybe it was both at the same time. I don't know how to, else to explain that, but the art in this one is fantastic. So these are the backs first off and these backs are stunning, but then you go into the deck and by the way, it has like really nice linen finish. So it just like does this and it's beautiful. But anyways, uh, art. Look at the art of this deck. This is honestly fantastic, right? Two of swords and it's like fencers. What? Like six of swords and look at the boat. I'm just like, even, even this card, the devil, which has been renamed to Temptation. And it's very, um, actually, I should have said like trigger warning there for people who don't like bodies. This is usually more than I can handle. Um, but in this case, I think it really shows the card well, right? Temptation, um, the Emperor, the Nine of Swords, like the feelings behind it from a different view of it. It's just, um, the art of this deck is simply stunning. I, I admire, I admire this so much. Like, I can't believe, I don't know how many of the original um, paintings of this have already been sold or not, but can you believe, like, some people actually have, like, these paintings somewhere in their house and they are fantastic. I can't even, I can't, again, I can't even imagine it's just so beautiful. I'm just grateful that I have it in tarot form. You know what I mean? Um, even like, even this temperance being renamed balance, like look at how beautiful. So this is definitely one where I'm just currently obsessed with the artwork. This page of coins is everything too. That is so cool. Oh, and the death. This death is so cool. Oh, wait, no, this is temperance. Then what is balance? <gasps> Ooh. Oh, wait. Oh, it's justice. Sorry. <laughs> well, how did I make that flub? Someone would have caught it right there. This is justice. Renamed balance. That actually makes some sense. I thought it was temperance. But this temperance card is so cool, too. But yeah, the art in this is fantastic. And that is why this is my um artist paint palette emoji deck because who would not okay who would not love this <laughs> okay next up is book right the book emoji and it is basically the best tarot book or guide book um I mean for tarot book it's a little harder to say I'm still like 
reading through a lot of them. But Guidebook, I think for me, it's still this one. This is Illuminating the Prophecy. This is the guidebook for the Raven's Prophecy. Um, funny enough, I will be showing that deck as a prompt later in the video. So keep that in mind. But I love this guidebook because, well, first off, this is a Llewellyn guidebook, okay? Um, but Maggie herself, the creator of the deck, is an author, okay? And this deck, if you don't know, is based on... It is based on her book series, although I've really divorced the two. Like, when I look at the deck, I don't immediately think of the book at all. Maybe because it's been a while since I've read the book, too. But there's, like, nothing in it that I'm remembering from either. So, you know what I mean? It's, like, it's it's more divorced for me. But anyways, this guidebook is everything. So, for instance, if I open it randomly to this page, um, obviously you get the title name. You get some keywords. You get the image artwork, and then you get all this nice information, even into the back, about the card. And it's for every card in this deck. Gets the same treatment. So first off, that's great, because I feel like every card should be getting an equal amount of treatment. Um, but the way that she writes it, too, is just so fantastic. Um, that I still reference this mostly to this day, and like my feelings on things... Um, oh, <laughs> yeah, and I've added a lot of notes and random stuff, as you can see, because she has, like, a lot of spreads, but then I have my own spreads in there. I kind of just, it's become this thing, but this by far is my favorite guidebook, so I just want to shout it out if you guys are not aware of this one or don't have this one, you know? Okay. Next up is number three, which is the brain emoji. And it says, a deck that makes you dive deep in thought. And for me, I mean, there's many decks I could say that probably do this for me. But, like, the first one that came to mind was definitely the Tildwick Tarot. As you can see, this is the 10th anniversary edition. Packs look like that. It has a little guidebook, although this thing is... I will say, this is the one flaw of this whole deck. This guidebook, <laughs> do you see that? See how microscopic it is? See if you hold, held it like this far away and tried to read it. Can you read it? No. You basically have to go like this and then like push it towards a camera or some other magnified surface and then you're able to read it. That is the only flaw with this guidebook. But I don't venture too much into the guidebook because... <clears throat> The way that the artwork is presented, I think, makes it more of a deep dive kind of deck. These are, sorry, this is the edging, um, the gilding. These are the backs. And these are the cards. The cards of this deck, the artwork, is also very beautiful. But the reason why I say this is my deep dive deck is because something about this deck, maybe in images, the way it's presented... Um, definitely feels like it almost, what's the word? It almost like path works you, if that makes sense. Um, you definitely like feel like you kind of go into the cards a bit. It doesn't seem like there's a lot, but there's a lot to get out of the image. And it definitely is one that you have to take your time with, um, and just really absorb what it's trying to say to you. There's like different parts, of course, of the cards that might even catch your attention at different times. So this is one that, and I would also say this is not a deck in some ways for everyone. Because obviously you have to, first off, you have to like the fact that there's no people in this deck. There's barely even, I don't think, animals in this deck. Maybe like a bird. See, like there's like birds in the distance. That's like it. Um, it's literally just the scenery and what the scenery is trying to show you. I mean, see, in the core cards, it does this thing. I don't know if you guys see it. See that? There are faces and they are like the embodiment and there's like figures, like kind of, like this hangman. But they're not real people. You know what I mean? Um, and so it's definitely one where you have to 
really dig and understand the meaning of, but I just, I don't know. I, I just love this deck. <laughs> you guys know. I've talked about it a lot on this channel, but this is definitely my brain deck because there's just a lot that you just have to be waiting and trying to understand to really get the point of it. But this is the Tildwick Tarot, and I just love it. Love it. Okay. Uh, now, I know this is Tarot Emoji Match, but I'm not going to lie. The next two decks are actually Oracles, and sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I'm cheating for this one. I don't care. These are the ones that immediately came to mind, okay? Um, coffee tea, a deck that makes you feel cozy. Um, I picked one that the first one that came to my mind, maybe because I was working with it in September, uh, is this one. This is Sissel Down. This is a Three Trees Tarot deck, but this is not tarot though. It is Oracle, their only Oracle to date. Uh, these are the two bonus cards that come with it. Okay. Coffee or tea emoji. This is the first one that came to mind for me because this deck is very cozy. It is like a hug in some ways. Um, this deck just really, as an oracle, this one vibes for me. This one always helps me, well, calm down, to be honest. <laughs> the deck is like talking to me right now. Uh, it helps me calm down. It helps me reassess myself. And understand where I'm at and that that's okay. Um, I I don't know. I was just... I, who was I telling? I think I was telling my... Um, one of the tarot discords I'm in. I was telling them. Uh, I think this is my favorite Three Trees tarot deck so far. Because it's the one that's like... The perfect size for one... Um, perfect thinness and also just has the right keywords I think they're like they're really precise for me and good and they just work they've been really effective um, so this is the one that makes me feel cozy and I love it for this time of year you know we're entering fall um I am tempted to bring this back out, but no, I will not. <laughs> I'm going to try to use other decks um, this time of year, but it's always very, very tempting and just feels like that cozy fall vibe. So I know, again, this is not a tarot deck. This is an oracle, but I felt like this perfectly fit the prompt. So I just wanted to share this one. So yeah. Okay, I said the next one was also an oracle, and it is. Uh, prompt number five is Crossed Swords, a deck you use for ancestral work. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't do ancestral work at this time, at least. I don't know if I will in the future, but I don't currently. What I do do that's similar and in the same vein, I guess, as ancestral work Um is occasionally I'll look into some past life stuff. So that deck for that um, is, oop, I think I put that upside down, but that's okay. Um, the deck for that is the Cosmovisions Oracle. This is a James R. Eads deck. Um, it has this amazing, oh, I don't know if you guys can see it, amazing like uh, gilded edging, as you can see. You can kind of tell it's like this dark color pearlescent holographic um when it's in the light not showing up as much on camera but it's there anyways this deck this deck is literally um was created not only to mirror the prisma visions tarot but cosmovisions oracle is literally about past lives it's about rebirth or moving on to the next life or the spirit plane and stuff of that nature um this deck i've only done a couple readings with this i try not to dig 
I don't know. There's this weird side of me that doesn't want to dig too deep into the past life stuff, but at the same time, I've had some information that, hmm, what's the word for it? Like, it didn't surprise me. <laughs> Maybe that's the better word. It didn't surprise me what I found out. But um, this is a deck that I have used a couple times for past life. I kind of want to study it a bit more in case other people, <coughs> ooh, sorry, in case other people wanted like past life readings. Um, but yeah, this is basically my past life reading deck. I don't know what happened there. I just like stopped talking. <laughs> But this is that. This is, I guess, my cross swords because I don't, um, I don't, like I said, I don't, I don't do ancestral work at this time. So this is basically the closest, oof, the closest I get to that. So that is that. And I'm going to move on. Okay, next. Um, oh, wait. Ooh, no. <laughs> put the wrong deck it's okay uh but this is this one you, you got a preview of what's gonna come after this one uh prompt number six is crystal the crystal emoji it basically says best or favorite gilded deck um i don't know if this is the best gilded but this is currently my favorite gilding because i just like the look of it uh, this is the This Might Hurt Tarot. I have the Indie Edition. So I guess this would not be relevant <laughs> for most people who have this deck. Um, unless you have the Indie also. This pretty much has the same as the Cosmo Visions, as you can see. It's like... Ugh, I'm trying to get a good shot of this. It's like black. But then it also... See? Ah, right there. See? You can see it. It has like that holographic look to it. And I just think that is the coolest. Um, the interesting thing, too, about the indie, besides this gilding, um, is that this was not the only type of edging for the for the indie edition. Like, um, there's also a version of this deck in the indie that had holographic, um, I think it was silver edging. I don't know. I don't have that one, obviously. I have this one. <laughs> But I like the gilding on it. I don't know if this is like, I wouldn't call it the best necessarily. I just think it's my favorite gilding. The deck itself is still one I'm working more with. I'm trying to understand more. So I don't know if it's up there in like top tier of being like a favorite, but also having good gilding, if that makes sense. Um, but I do enjoy this deck's gilding. So I wanted to show that off so that you guys um, could see. But yeah, the indie version has this. Um, it is mass market now. And I think only... Hmm, I'm trying to remember. I think I've seen videos. Um, I think only the special edition by Liminal 11 that they did, the special edition of this deck, has... Um, maybe also holographic silver um, gilding. But yeah, this version I really, really enjoy. But because you guys already saw the other one, <laughs> let's just go into number seven. Um, that is the island emoji. And it's basically a, it says deserted island deck. I'm assuming this is like if you were trapped on a deserted island, what deck would you want? And that's even harder to say. I don't know if I could pick just one. In some ways, I would have said the deck that's going to be after this one. But at the same time, I feel like this one makes me think of an island because of the colors more. So that's kind of what I went with. Anyways, this is the Spark and Pen Tarot. These are the backs. Um, This deck. I do love this deck. And I feel like if I was on a deserted island, I wouldn't want something that's fun and vibrant and that might hold up okay-ish. This deck is on um, a linen cardstock that just feels, um, it feels nice. Oh, see, island vibes. There's like, uh, you know, there's, there's fishies. 
Oh, this card, though, makes me so depressed. Anyways, I try not to look at that one. That's the only one. That card's kind of triggering. Um, but other than that, I love this deck. I would love to just, you know, keep it around, have it with me. It gives pretty accurate readings these days because I've used it um, for a lot of readings, especially this year, in the year in which I've gotten it, I guess. But um, it's just done a lot. And it's, again, it's one of my favorites now. So I would want it with me. It's just so hard to pick. And I guess it's like, this is the most precious. Like, I do love my Raven, or, ooh, I can't say. <laughs> I was going to say, I do love my next deck. Um, and then I'm going to show also a lot. And it's definitely up there. But it is mass market. So if I did have to replace that one, I could. This one, it is now in print again, I think, um, by the creator. But for a while, it was out of print. So that also made this more... Um, precious feeling, but yeah, this is my island emoji. Okay, uh, next up, which is in this one, uh, number eight is the moon emoji, and it says it's your wisest deck, and it is this one <laughs> that I kind of basically spoiled. Um, this is the Raven's Prophecy Tarot. This goes with the guidebook I showed earlier. I mentioned that, didn't I? Um, the, the, I have edged this, this is my own edging, in this uh, orange color to match the fronds. I did this. Anyways, this is my copy, my beat up cough copy. I'm pretty sure I have also um, a first printing. and Well, I did actually, I did pre-order this, but I mean like, I'm pretty sure it's like a first printing because the cardstock on this deck um, is different than what I've seen it on now. Like, now, like, you can see that it has a slight shine, um, but the cardstock it's on now is a lot, um, glossier and, like, different textured. I don't know how else to explain that, but anyways, this is my edition, um, and this is my wisest deck because it just always knows what to tell me. It's got moon energy in it, High Priestess energy in it. It's mysterious, otherworldly, but at the same time, it always gives me exactly the message I need. This is my oldest tarot deck, and so for that reason too, you know, it has um, a lot of my energy bounded into it, but it is very wise, and it is not afraid to tell me exactly what I need to know. These wands are definitely some of the most intense in um, a lot of tarot decks I have. But at the same time, they get straight to the point. So I don't know. I, <laughs> I still love them for that reason. Um, but I guess by grace of being the oldest and the most consistent, uh, this is definitely my wisest. Uh, but I love it. I do. Um... And, yeah, I would be sad, actually. <laughs> also, like, this one was almost my deserted island deck, too. Um, I would be sad if I do, if I ever lost this copy, though, because of this cardstock is better um, than Llewellyn cardstock now. No offense, but sorry. Well, no offense, but offense. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like their, their cardstock now. Um, but I just love, I just love this deck. It is so good. Um, and yeah, it's my most accurate reader, and for that reason, also my wisest. Okay, only two more prompts, but prompt number nine is the plane emoji, and that is basically a deck you use when traveling. Um, <laughs> I, I'm showing two copies basically of the same deck, because when I've traveled, this is probably the deck I have used the most in more recent times. This little itty bitty version is still the Monsoon Tarot. But as you can see, it is microscopic almost. <laughs> and that is why I have traveled with this one. Okay? It's very tiny though. 
Um, but I love it. And these are the backs of the mini. This was my first version of this deck. Originally, I just got the mini. Um, and I was tickled pink by it because it is hilariously small. I have small hands in general. Um, but this deck is even small in my hands. So it's like hilarious. Uh, but other people <laughs> have encountered the mini and have been like, yo, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and that's okay. I take this, though, traveling for a reason, because as you can see, it is um, small. But for the purpose of showing you this deck, <laughs> that's why I have the bigger version that I bought afterwards, because I was like, you know what? I do love this deck, um, and I want a bigger <laughs> copy of it. But the backs of this one have this, like, darker border. Still the same, though, pretty much. Anyways, Monsoon Tarot. Why have I traveled with this deck the most? I think it's just because for the longest time, not anymore, but for the longest time, this was my smallest deck. And because it was so small, it was just easy to literally fit into any bag without having to worry about space. This bet, this deck, I mean, sorry, is fantastic. Um, it's not for everyone. Because I think to really understand this deck, you kind of have to understand, I think fundamentally you have to be very fantastical, like understanding the fantastic and also understanding dreams. This is a very dreamy deck. This is about how dreams work. How some of them are very nonsensical and out there. Some have faces and like these don't have faces and don't have faces but some of these do have the slight form of a face right your dreams are also very inconsistent like that sometimes you can see details like this of things and sometimes the details are more vague like this it's just understanding that that's the art style um the creator of this deck decided to go with okay but obviously these no faces faces creep some people out. What's interesting is this same creator, I don't know, it doesn't say on here. God damn it. I don't know. Um does not say. Cool. Um don't know. But this creator <laughs> did come out with another technically two tarot decks because of this, like because some people were not jiving with the monsoon. They created, um, oh shoot, what are they called? I forget their full name, but they have a Silent and Awaken edition. That's an important thing. I have my co own collection, but I haven't used them yet. Um, but I also have the itty bitty minis of those. <laughs> But in that, in the silent edition, you see no faces still. And in the awakened edition, you do see faces. So they like purposely did that because of people's thoughts to this deck originally. But anyways, that was a whole tangent. Just to say that I traveled with this deck for the longest time because it was the easiest deck, right? The easiest deck to work with. Um, and because it was so small, it was easy to carry around and it was just a fun time. So yeah, this mini, <laughs> I still love this mini. I still, I'm sorry. It's so cute and little to me. Like, look at it. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> but not everybody, not, I know not everybody would appreciate this, but that's okay. Um, but if you have the mini, you know, <laughs> If you actually really like it, you know, this is a fun time. Um, and it's just very easy to travel on a plane with. Okay, finally, um, prompt number 10 on this video is the ribbon emoji. And that is the last deck that was gifted to you. Now, I'm going to be honest. Uh, people don't gift me tarot decks. I have basically... Oh, sorry. Wow, I had like a weird... <clears throat> there we go. I need to cough. Um, people don't gift me tarot decks, but um, my husband, who does know I, you know, do tarot, he did. Funny enough, we were on a trip a little bit ago, and he kind of did enable me <laughs> to get this one. It was like the one and only time he was like, "Yeah, you know what? This is fake. Go ahead, get this deck." Um, so it's almost kind of like a gift from him, even though I 
I paid for it. <laughs> but he, he actually like encouraged me to get this one and he almost never does. He's like, please stop. <laughs> please don't, please don't bring any more decks. But um, this was kind of like that interesting like seal of approval from him so i'm counting it as my ribbon deck this is the insecta obscura tarot um if you are robin at robin's reflections and for some reason you decide to watch this <laughs> video you know already you know the drill you don't need to watch this or you can stop watching now because this is a deck of bugs um if you don't like bugs maybe skip the rest of this but Basically, this is a deck that shows um, bugs, but inside the bugs are like surreal images that relate to the tarot cards in question. As you can see, these are the backs, and this is also a square deck. Um, not everybody likes square decks for some reason. I kind of do, although this one kind of reaches the limit of like what I can hold around my hand. But anyways, that's not that's not the important part. This is... Um, Insect Obscura. I am starting to use it for the month of October. At the time of me filming this, it is technically the end of September, but I will be using this in the month of October. And I already did a week ahead reading with this. Um, I, I like this deck. I do. I think this was fun. It was funny that he, <laughs> my, my husband, was like, yeah, go, go ahead, go, go get this one. This seems like fate. If you've been interested in this one and you finally saw it in person, then that's a sign that you should grab it, you know? And, um, I am surprised how much I like this. I'm not going to tell you I'm like, um, the biggest proponent ever of bugs, you know? I mean, like, this kind of bug, if I saw this kind of bug in real life, like, this centipede-ish, like, bug, I'd be freaked the fuck out. Um, but <laughs> I love the way that the bugs are presented here. I do like moss. I do like um, certain beetles. Not really wasps, though. I think all the blades are wasp types. I don't remember. Um, and I'm not necessarily... a big fan of spiders either but there's like I don't know I have weird exceptions of bugs that I uh don't mind at all and so I just think this deck is so cool like look at this the moon I mean yeah it's a luna moth by the same time you see like an owl's face in it like, that's what I mean it's just a very different deck um very cool different way of showing things um, and it's for that reason that I just really like this deck. See, look at this. The Four of Blades is literally like, it says a great black wasp, but then there's like an anchor in it to show like you rest here, stop here. And it's just so cool. Even like the world as the globe wanderer. Like, look at it. That is so cool. I don't know. I'm just jazzed. I like this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyways, uh, that's, I guess, the end of my video. This was a fun one. I don't always connect to all the emojis because I feel like I don't always use them all. But I was tagged. And so I wanted to try and do this one um, while I remembered. <laughs> so I'm filming this now. But anyways, if you've watched this long, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you again next time. Bye.